Hello grade 7, this is Miss Sara and I'll be teaching you physics this year. You might ask, what is physics? Physics is the branch of science that studies the physical world, including objects as small as subatomic particles and as large as galaxies. Physicists are very curious people who want to know the causes of what they see. Well, aren't we all? Like, how does the moon move? Why does the moon move? Why do the stars shine? Or why do your hands get warm when you rub them together? Physicists, like all scientists, hope to find explanations that describe more than one phenomenon and offer a better understanding of how the universe works. Now let's start our physics journey with the first chapter of our book, which is titled Solids and Liquids. Let's start. So these are the objectives that we're going to cover during this week's lecture. So you guys will be able to distinguish between solids and liquids. You will know that solids have a definite shape and that liquids have an indefinite shape. Everything around us is called matter. Matter is anything which occupies spaces and has mass and volume. So anything or everything around you is made up of matter. The air you breathe, the water you drink, even your own bodies, they are all made up of matter. Matter can exist in various phases. It can be solid, liquid, gas, or plasma. Wow, we're not going to talk about plasma today. Okay, so matter can exist in various phases. We said solid, liquid, gas, or plasma. Now, I'm gonna, in the next slide, I'm gonna use a simulation. Now, every time you see this phone, it means that this phone is clickable. There is a link inside this phone. So with the PowerPoint that I sent you, you can simply open the PowerPoint, click on this phone, and it will take you to the web page or the simulation that I'll be using in the next slide, okay? Uh, this is not optional. So you have to click it and try it at home. All materials are made up of very, very small particles held together by forces. Now, in order for us to see those particles, we need to put the material under the microscope. So let's put a solid under the microscope. What we will be able to see. As you can see, in a solid, the particles, which are the blue circles, they are held very close together, so they can hardly move. So you can see, they vibrate, but they don't move. In a liquid, what is happening here? In a liquid, the particles are not so tightly packed, so they can move just a little. You can see them moving a little. How about in a gas? Whoa, the particles are spread apart and can easily move. So this is the difference between a gas, a liquid, and a solid. When we say solid, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? Come on, let's brainstorm here. Maybe a rock, or maybe just your pen, right? Um, maybe a ruler or a tablet, it could be. How about some building blocks? Or maybe some wood? Now, all these seem so random, right? All these uh, objects seem so random, but they all have one thing in common. They are all solids. Now, um, if you have the book, you can open your book page six. If you don't, it's okay, you can follow up here. So we have three items, a pen, a ruler, and a tablet. It says here, could you hold these objects with your fingers? I don't know, let's try. Can you hold your pen with your fingers or 
your ruler or even the tablet that you're watching this video with right now? Can you do that? Yes, you can. We can hold these with our fingers. Now it says place those objects on your desk. So just take these objects and put them on your desk. Do these objects change in shape? Um, what do you think? Will this, the shape of the pen change? If you put it on your desk or maybe the ruler or maybe a, a rectangular tablet can become circular one? No, they do not change in shape. Okay, so this is a big no. Are those objects solids? Can we call these objects solids? Yes, we can. And it says here, what can you conclude? Well, first conclusion that I can put is that a solid is an object which can be held. So anything that is solid, I'm able to hold with my fingers. How about the second thing that I can conclude is that what? Solids keep their shape. So if I move this solid from one place to another, its shape doesn't change. Okay, so a solid uh, keep its shape. From now on, everything that is put into table, just like that, we need to memorize it. So let's see. We conclude that solids have a definite shape. Definite means that if I move this solid from one place to another, it doesn't change shape. Just like your pencil, pen, tablet, anything that's solid. Also, solids can be held with fingers. So these two are really important uh, properties of solids. Now, when I say liquid, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? Of course, the water we drink, right? How about some strawberry juice or maybe some orange juice or any juice? Maybe some milk? or olive oil. Now these all, they have different colors, different, they taste differently, but they all have one property in common. They are all liquids. Observe water in a water bottle and juice in a cup. So we have orange juice here. Are you able to hold water or juice by using your fingers? What do you think? Well, you're not going to know unless you actually experiment this. So you know what? Forget it. Go to the sink just right now, open the tap and try to hold the water with your fingers. Just pause this video, go try it and then come back and let's see what's the result. Okay, just go pause it. Okay, now that you're back, what do you think? Were you able to actually hold the water by using your fingers just like that? Just try to hold it with your thumb and index? No, you can't. So it's unlike solids, liquids cannot be held with fingers. Now it says here, pour water in a glass container. So I'm going to go to this simulation and do that experiment. You can also do it with me, okay? So as you can see, I have water inside this plastic uh, container. I need to pour the water into this bottle. It's an empty bottle. So just press one. Okay. Now, does water change in shape? Yes, it does. How about what is the shape of water when found in this bottle? It simply took the shape of the bottle. Let's take another example. It says here, pour water in a glass container. So I have this water bottle. I poured some of the water in this uh, glass cup. Does water change in shape? You can also try this at home. So yes, it does change in shape. Water changes shape. What is the shape water takes when found in the glass container? 
Well, it simply takes the shape of the glass container. So it takes the shape of the glass container. How about if I brought the same amount of water and I poured it into six different vessels? Does water have the same shape in all vessels? Now, this is so obvious. No, it doesn't. So does a liquid then have a definite shape? No, a liquid has an indefinite shape. It takes the shape of the vessel that contains it. So what we need to memorize is that liquids have an indefinite shape. Liquids flow and take the shape of the container. Liquids cannot be held with fingers. So now that we talked about solids and liquids, let's get to know some particular solids, like special types of solids. So it says here, get a piece of modeling clay. So you bring a piece of, uh, let's say, Play-Doh and a flower container. So I have this glass container filled with a uh, flower. Could you hold the flower with your fingers? Now, in order for you to know that, you have to actually try it. So why don't you just pause the video and go try it and see if you can hold the flower with your fingers. So the answer is yes, we can. Could you hold the piece of modeling clay with your fingers? Can you actually hold this piece with your fingers? Yes, of course, or else how how were you able to actually do an ice cream cone with ice cream on top if you weren't able to hold this with your fingers? So yeah, definitely. Now they ask, are they solids? Well, I know that they are not liquid, so yes, they are solid. Do they have a definite shape? Now let's see, if you take this modeling clay and you put it on your desk, okay, or you change its place, will its shape change? No, its shape will change only if you actually deform it, right? If you pressed on it, it will change. But just by moving it from one place to another, it doesn't change. So its shape is definite, just like a normal solid. But the flower, if you take it and you spread it on your desk, its shape will change, okay? If you put it in a different container, its shape will change. So the flower, it has an indefinite shape, just like a liquid. So we say that the modeling clay has a definite shape, but the flower does not have a definite shape. What can you conclude? I can conclude that the clay, it takes the shape you formed, but the flower, it takes the shape of the container holding it, just like a liquid. So what we need to remember, first of all, the first type of particular solids, which is malleable solids. Some solids as butter, molding clay, uh, any squishy toy you have are malleable solids that are easily deformed and this is what we call them. So we talked about malleable solids, now powdered solids. So what we have to remember about powdered solids is that uh, some examples of powdered solids are like sand, salt, flour, maybe also rice, anything that is made up of small grains, okay? So they are called powdered solids. And their properties are really close uh, to that of liquids because those solids flow and they have an indefinite shape. So they take the shape of the container. And as you can see from this picture, these solids actually pile up. See how they pile up? So when you put them, they make a little slope. Now in the next lecture, we're gonna see how that differs from a property that liquids have. 
So let's make a quick revision about what we took in this week's lecture. So we are able now to distinguish between solids and liquids. Solids have a definite shape. Liquids have an indefinite shape. Solids can be held with fingers. Liquids cannot be held with fingers. Liquids flow and take the shape of the container. Solids don't flow and don't take the shape of the container. But we also learned about some particular solids, like powdered solids. And powdered solids have an indefinite shape. They can be held with fingers and they flow and take the shape of the container. We also talked about malleable solids, which can be easily deformed. So that is it. I hope you guys found this easy. So this is the first part of the chapter. The second part is for next week. So you can solve the worksheet now and I'll meet you guys in the Zoom live so that we can go over, just review this part of the chapter and solve the worksheet together. So take care and bye-bye.